Hey guys, this is Clinton Jeff from UnleashTheFone.com and here's a quick look at the software on the Nokia X. The Nokia X technically runs Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean. The thing is, it doesn't look anything like any Android UI you've ever seen before. Um, you have a main screen here which lists out all your apps in the form of icons that are also like live tiles because it'll give you a little notification there to let you know uh, if you have new messages or new emails, it'll give you a number right over there. And even the Photo Hub kind of app animates over here. Um, the thing is, the UI is is an interesting way of listing apps. Um, you can also, for example, move an app around if you want to. Uh, you can also add widgets, which kind of looks a little strange because it's all in one list. So a widget will look a little weird. Uh, you can also just delete that. Um, or you can just add folders. You can add a folder, throw in a list of apps, a bunch of apps in there. Um, and you can also change the color of some of these icons to uh, something else that you want to. Now, the thing is, the uh, UI is interesting, but it is very much like Nokia's Asha 500 series uh, swipe UI. Now, the thing with this UI is that it also has a list of the apps. main screen basically, and you swipe to the side and you get something called Fast. It's a very new way of doing notifications. Instead, of, instead the notification drop down on the Nokia X only shows you shortcuts to toggle uh, like your Wi Fi or your Bluetooth or data on and off, and it will also show you if you get um, connected to a Wi Fi or, or a message or something like that. Apart from that, it shows you all notifications in Fastlane. Um, it also shows you any apps that you recently used, any files you downloaded, uh, if there are any app updates available that you should install, any pictures you've taken, all in chronological order that you've taken or used it. So it's a strange way to do notifications for sure. Um, I'm not exactly 100% uh, happy with that. It does take a little getting used to. Some people might actually like it. This is why I keep saying that um, the Nokia X UI is really not for somebody who's used an Android phone before. It's more for people who, who are brand new to smartphones or phones in general and just want to try something simple out. So the UI is, yes, a lot like the uh, Nokia Asha UI. You'll see a lot of um, similarities even in things like the the calendar application for example or the alarms application for example that all look very very similar um, just like the uh, UI on the uh, Nokia Asha series of phones you can open up an app and then you will see that there's a little thingamajig at the bottom that you can slide upwards to get more options this is basically the menu key the menu option uh, on Android so it's an interesting take on Android UI for sure. It's more similar to Nokia's Asha phones. I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, that being said, you can kind of get the Nokia X to run um, Google applications and even get it to look a lot more like an Android phone by installing the Google Now launcher. But to do that, you have to root the Nokia X. And I'll have a different video on just that. But as the phone as the phone is, as you get out of the box without rooting it, you can't install Google services or any Google apps on this phone because Nokia has stripped those uh, Google apps out of this phone. And that's why you don't actually have any Google integration as such on this phone. Um, you do have Nokia's applications like Hero Maps instead of Google Maps. Um, and you have a lot of Microsoft services instead of Google's applications. So that is another interesting thing about this phone. You can't install Google Apps until you boot it and bring those services in. Uh, if you try installing the Google Play Store, for example, uh, it will install but will not load up. You will just get an error. And you can download APK files and install them just like a normal Android phone. Uh, I have a separate tutorial on how to do that as well. So it is an Android phone. It's just that it doesn't look like an Android phone. Now, just to give you a quick tour of the settings menu, you have all the usual settings that you'd see on an Android phone, you get Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data, uh, a dual SIM settings because this is a dual SIM phone. You can set one SIM card for 3G uh, and that's only in SIM card slot 1. You have sounds and vibration settings, you have your storage settings uh, which will tell you how much space is being used by what. Um, you only have about 778 MB of available space out of that 1.2 GB out of the for GB of internal memory to actually use for apps. 
uh, that's not much but uh, you can move your apps over to the micro SD card which is definitely appreciated because uh, that's not a lot of space on board to use so you can um, move these apps to micro SD card so there you go just hit that button and it'll move it around so this is very similar to most Android phones that you've seen before. Um, there's also battery settings where you can check out what's draining your battery and what's using it up. Um, and of course there's display settings where you can change your wallpaper. Uh, you can't really change uh, your lock screen. You do have something called glance screen which is similar to what Nokia has on Lumia phones where it will show you the time um, on standby when your screen is not switched on. Uh, but you can't really put a pattern lock, for example, like on most Android phones. You can put a pin lock there where you enter a number instead. Um, notifications, you can get banners to show you on the, your, your lock screen. Like, uh, like right now, if you swipe this open to this side, you'll open up the Twitter app. But if you swipe it over here, it goes away. So that is an interesting uh, <laughs> way to handle notifications for sure then there's Fastlane which I have talked about but you can also manage which notifications display on Fastlane so you can choose not to get uh, video game notifications for example you can choose not to get Danger Dash whatever that is or Fruit Ninja notifications or even have it listed that you've used it on the Fastlane uh, which manages all of your history um, so you can choose that as well uh, it is nice that you can customize that otherwise it does get a little maddening that every single application or every single event you do on this phone is recorded in fast um, moving on you can add accounts but uh, the setup procedure to add email is a bit tedious I've covered this in my review uh, on the website so you can check out unleashthephones.com for a better idea okay that. and lastly you have a couple accessibility settings where you can choose to use the power button to end the calls choose to turn off auto rotation of the screen and finally you can just check out about your phone now you will never see any mention of Android on this screen um, even though the Nokia X does run Android 4.1 officially it just runs uh, Nokia X software platform version 1 uh, if you check for system updates it will check for updates to that um, UI basically and then there's here maps which works well enough uh, it does take a little while to start up because it is a heavy application after all. Uh, but once it starts up, it works around just fine, no problems as such. And lastly, there's the Nokia Store. The Nokia Store, of course, has all of Nokia's curated list of Android apps listed in there. For now, it is missing some applications. For example, it doesn't have WhatsApp or Instagram. So I had to find the WhatsApp APK file and the Instagram APK file and install that manually. But if you do find an app on this, and there are quite a lot of apps, uh, you can just hit the download button and install it like any normal app store. It works really well. The list of apps on the Nokia store is growing as well. Uh, according to Nokia, developers just have to mess with a couple lines of code to make apps compatible with the Nokia X. Um, so yeah guys, that's a quick look at the software on the Nokia X. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, if you have any questions, do let me know right in the comment section below. Or check out the post on unleashthephones.com.